quickly. Cattle production is going to provide protein for humanity around the world. It is a necessary food source. So our job is to try and reduce the emissions we have while still producing the same or more beef. In the Australian context, the majority of greenhouse gas emissions, and predominantly methane in that case, come from our grazing cattle. Every single cow that ends up through a feedlot has to have gone through a grazing system, whether that be cow-calf or the backgrounding phase, which is what we target, that animal starts out on pasture. That is where the majority of emissions are, and then they enter a feedlot at some stage of life. That only accounts for around 5% of emissions. The project we're talking about today is a really strong collaboration between the University of Queensland, who is running the trial, and our off-site as QOS, the Queensland Animal Science Precinct, in conjunction with NAPCO and DSM. So there are a few challenges when we talk about supplementing antimethanogenic products in grazing animals. Primarily is getting an animal to come in and eat that product. So it needs to be attractive. Um, it needs to obviously be cost effective. But the reality of most of these products is their mode of action means they need to be eaten throughout the day. So we need to not only supplement once, but we need to keep the animals coming back. And that was one of the main aims of this project. So the methodology of this experiment was based around 150 cattle split into three different treatment groups. We had treatment one, our control or grazing only. Treatment two was two kilograms of energy pellets in addition to grazing. Treatment three was the two kilograms of energy pellets grazing, but those pellets also included bovair. Overall, our animals were fed for 56 days across two different seasons, both summer and autumn. So within this project, we're using what's called a green feed system. So what this is, is an automated feeder where the animal has an RFID tag. It comes in, that tag beeps. The animal is then given a set amount of feed. And as the animal is consuming that feed in a pelleted form, the methane in their breath is measured. We have 200,000 head of cattle uh, spread across 6.1 million hectares. In our mission to become more environmentally friendly, one of the things we just have to do is reduce the amount of carbon emissions coming from our cattle, so reduce the methane emissions. For a number of years now, we've been recording our carbon footprint right across the company. We've learned that 80% of our carbon footprint actually comes from our cattle. So part of our mission is to reduce those emissions. And we've made great inroads in that already through a range of different initiatives, including our breeding program, halving our emissions intensity. But the next big step we think is going to be through feed additives like Bovair. How is methane produced? To be very specific, it's the microorganism in the cow that is producing methane. And therefore we ask ourselves, what are the relevant enzymatic transformations that transform CO2 and hydrogen into methane, which is then burped out. It's an enzymatic cascade of seven steps. And we ask ourselves, how can we reduce some of these steps so that the overall result is the cow is burping methane less. We tested compounds first in sheep, then in dairy cows, and then in beef cattle. And then we identified the current active ingredient that is part of Bovea, the, the molecule 3 NOP. It was a long journey of testing this feed additive for methane reduction around the world in different feeding systems, in dairy and in beef cattle. At the moment, um, we have reduced uh, 55,000 tons of CO2 equivalents as uh, avoided emissions. And we are targeting 150,000 uh, tons already this year. And then we are scaling up. Australia was an early adopter. We heard that the wish to have the most sustainable animal protein production system around the world, that's the ambition of the Australian red meat sector. A feed additive like Bovea might be a very, very important element because when you think about the carbon footprint of a kilogram of edible products, and that's roughly the same for meat and for milk, the largest part is coming from the methane emission, so that's contributing the most to the carbon footprint. So if you address this one and if you reduce this by 30, 50, 80, 90 percent, then of course your impact to the entire production system is be the biggest. For animals on energy pellets and pasture, the addition of Bovair reduced methane emissions by 15.9 percent as grams of methane per day. 
and 24.8% when we record it as grams of methane per kilograms of average daily gain in comparison to energy only supplementation in our grazing cattle. For grazing animals that were supplemented with both energy and bovair pellets, methane reduction was 31.5% when measured in grams of methane per kilogram of average daily gain compared to our control grazing only group. Average daily gain of cattle given pellets containing bovair was 6.6% greater than those given pellets without bovair and 18.6% greater than the grazing animals. Overall, the addition of bovair to the pellets increased weight gain of the animals on top of the gains we saw with the pellets alone. This is a really positive result. When this is extrapolated to a typical backgrounding period, animals given bovair pellets would reach their target end weight 28 days faster than energy pellets alone and 54 days faster compared to grazing only. This would amount to a reduction of 340 kilograms of CO2 equivalent with the addition of bovair during a typical backgrounding period. This is the very first time globally that improved productivity parameters and methane reduction have been shown in grazing cattle. We know that productivity increases are a critical part of adoption of new technologies. We want to know that not only are we reducing methane, but we're making it profitable for our farmers. Otherwise, they won't implement it. That's why this trial was actually really exciting. With the combination of a reduction in methane and the increase in growth that we saw, this might actually be a financially viable option for our farmers.